one of the men currently um, behind the parked wire that we can see um, in the background. He is a permanent resident of Australia. He has lived here since a child. He was a child. He has won in court against the revocation of his visa. Uh, this happened over a year ago. He is still being held with no charge trial or impending court cases to come. Um, this is what he says. Greetings and blessings from the man at Yonga Hill. We are deeply appreciative that you could be standing here with us today. Though tall fences separate us, we nevertheless thank you for your solidarity. Changing attitudes towards immigrants has seen a steady erosion of the rights of non-Australian citizens. It has led us to where we are standing now. A faction of politicians have become increasingly vocal in demonising immigrants and foreigners characterising them as terrorists and criminals, creating the impression that they are something to be feared. By deliberately cultivating this hysteria, they effectively create a smokescreen which clouds the facts and the reality. Look at the fences and the gates they have put around us. They are the physical manifestation of that deception and hysteria. They create the impression that the people locked within these fences are dangerous and something to be feared. Australia's attitude toward foreigners is changing, or so the politicians would have you believe. For the first time since 1945, Australia does not have a government department with the word immigration in its official title. I would like, I would like to tell you a story which I think best encapsulates that changing view of immigrants. The major onshore immigration detention centre on the east coast is Sydney's Bullawood Immigration Detention Centre. Many of you would know it or have heard about it, but how many of you actually know the history of the centre? Do you know what the facility actually was before it became an immigration detention centre? In the 1950s and 60s, it was known as Villawood Hostel, and it was a far cry from its present day incarnation as a maximum security concentration camp. The Villawood Hostel actually welcomed immigrants to our shores. It started life as an accommodation facility for emigrant families, a place where families could reside until they found permanent housing and settled into the Australian community. It was a place of happiness, excitement and hope as families began a new life in the land down under. If you're as old as me, you will remember a band called the Easy Beats. Bonus points if you can sing Friday on my mind. They were Australia's first big musical expert band of five lads who had all immigrated with their families from England, Scotland and Holland. Amongst them was George Young, the eldest brother of Malcolm and Angus Young, who went on to form another famous Australian band, ACDC. So why do I mention this and what is the connection with Villawood? Well, the lads all met in Villawood Hostel and formed the Easy Beats from there. It is interesting to observe that these fresh-faced boys were quickly embraced as Australia's own, but they weren't all saints. Stevie Wright, lead singer of the Easy Beats, battled heroin addiction, was charged with burgl burglary and break and enters. Bon Scott, the Scottish-born lead singer of ACDC, did nine months imprisonment for unlawful carnal knowledge and destru destruction of property. I tell you this because if they were living in present-day Australia, and had not taken out Australian citizenship, they would most likely be in a detention centre. Maybe Yonga Hill or back in Villawood where they first met, with their visas cancelled and awaiting deportation. Were they fundamentally bad people? Would you refer to them as criminals? Living as they did in the 60s and 70s, they were fated as Aussie legends. It would be a different story if they were living in 2019. These are the same men who politicians like Peter Dutton characterise as hardened criminals and threats to society. Many in, offshore de in onshore detention are detained on character grounds and there is still something of a cloud of mystery hanging over them. Who are these people? Why are they here? I can tell you that the vast majority are usually far from being the hardened criminals and gang members that Peter Dutton and the government paint them as. Many are one-time offenders. Many have lived in Australia most of their lives. Many have led lawful, worthy lives. 
but the one mistake they made landed them in a detention centre. The government would have you believe they are a risk to the community. That's why they are locked up in a virtual maximum security prison. But here's the thing. If they were Australian citizens in exactly the same circumstances, same background, same wrongdoing, same prison sentence, they would now be back in the community, back home with their family, living and working amongst you. Does this mean that Australian citizens present less of a risk than non-Australian citizens? Or perhaps this means the government is painting a picture which is far from the truth. Today, Villawood Detention Centre looks exactly like the facility we're standing in front of now. It has high fences, razor wire, gates and security cameras. It is a far cry from its early days of laughter, excitement and hope. Today, it is populated with anxious men. Most of them have been deliberately moved away from their partners, families and children in a move designed to break them into signing to leave Australia. The concern of deportation hangs over them daily like a dark cloud. Suicide attempts and self-harm incidents are commonplace. Antidepressants and sleeping pills are doled out like candy. When they are moved between centres or escorted out to see doctors or for hospital visits, they are placed in heavy handcuffs. They are humiliated and forced to weather the indignity being led around in cuffs. Why? Remember, if they were Australian citizens in exactly the same situation, same background, same criminal history, they would actually be living unsupervised in the community and they would most certainly not be made to walk around in handcuffs. The reason that people are held for indefinite periods in these draconian conditions, the fundamental reason is that they do not have a piece of paper with the words Australian citizenship written across the top. And that is not actually a crime. Australia, like all nations, has a right to strong borders and safe communities. But there is a way to achieve that without destroying thousands of lives in the process. The fact is, there is good and bad in all races, in both sexes, in all religions. That is human nature, and therein lies an important truth. We are all one. And so here we all stand, you on one side of a tall security fence and we men on the other side, separated from our loved ones. We are all one and we are all fundamentally the same. We love our kids, our partner, our families. We long for a sense of justice and fair play. Bless you all for your conviction, your compassion and your love. And thank you for being one with us.